that, I mean, correlation is always causation, as the famous saying goes. Oh, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of topics to explore. Across what subjects? Oh, let me tell you. Design, business, art, music, more. Skillshare is giving away a free trial of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who use my link in the description below. More on them in a bit. Welcome to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. I, of course, am your boy with the blaze. What happens here is Danny shall write us a script, I shall read the script and make it slightly worse, and then Sam will add some fine memes. This one is the best 5G conspiracy theories. Not the best as in we like them, just like the best as in they're the most ridiculous. When I was doing it, the first YouTube channel I ever did was a channel, is a channel, still make it, called Top Tens. And we do top 10 lists. And a friend of mine would always joke, he's like, Simon, when's the list of the top 10 best terrorist attacks coming? <laughs> and I was like, Top 10 is a serious channel. I can't make that. But I mean, obviously, the best terrorist attacks would be the ones that were like foiled and unsuccessful because, you know, those are the best ones because no one likes a f terrorist. But this is the best 5G conspiracy theories. I'm very curious as to where Danny's gonna take this. I'm gonna assume that he doesn't believe in any of these 5G conspiracies because he doesn't have an IQ of 37. So let's crack on. It's nearly always nice to bump into an old friend you haven't seen for years and years, except A, if they're pitching you a pyramid scheme, or B, they're like, oh, that 5G, eh? I mean, a lot of people are getting COVID. It's a bit coincidental that it just happens to be when all those 5G towers go up. I, I mean, correlation is always causation, as the famous saying goes. It often turns out to be a pleasant opportunity to have a good catch up and discuss who's got married, who's got divorced, who's been sent to prison, Jesus Christ. Christ, and who's died. And if all, <laughs> normally it's like, well, I hope like, oh, it's nice to hear people got married. Also there's Facebook these days, so you know. <laughs> but also like divorced, prison, death. I feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen John? Oh no, he got divorced, then murdered his old wife and went to prison. Oh sh If all else fails, you can at least discreetly inquire about how much money they're earning to see how well or how badly you're doing in comparison to these characters from yesteryear with whom you used to tread a similar path. Having said that, I was profoundly disappointed when I met up with my old buddy and former partner in crime, Mark, for the first time in about 20 years. Danny, I hope you're not writing down your crimes here. Mark had always been a pretty smart and energetic guy. I assumed he'd end up running his own successful business or inventing the teleport or something. Jesus. <laughs> Mark is a potential Nobel Prize winner. Sadly, the tides of time had not been kind to Mark. He gave me a wild-eyed stare as he revealed that he wasn't working at the moment because he refuses to become a slave to capitalist tax dodges. He then went on a long-winded rant about how he'd been thrown out of his flat after his evil money-grabbing landlord started to get a bit grumpy about not receiving any rent for eight months. That bastard. <laughs> What does he expect? Rent? Yes, Mark, that's exactly what he expects. You live in his apartment. This was apparently all the fault of Boris Johnson and the corrupt Tory government, rather than anything to do with Mark blowing all of his rent money on weed every month. Well, I can't blame him for that one. Also in the UK, he, he like, the idea that he can live there for eight months before being kicked out. I mean, I'm, I'm generally like, yes, uh, landlord and tenant law should generally favor the tenants, because if a landlord has someone just living in their house and not paying rent, they're just not earning money. But if that guy doesn't have anywhere to live, well, he's on the street. So, you know, obviously there's a difference in balance of power. But also, is it really right that some dude can live in your apartment for eight months and not pay you rent? And then it's like, you've got to take them to court and they don't have any money because they smoked it all? It's like, I don't know. That also seems to be a bit too far on that, that side, doesn't it? Or the left side. I don't know. Who cares? Let's move on. All I'm saying is if I was renting out an apartment to someone and they didn't pay me for eight months, I'd be pretty f***ing pissed. Yeah. As the awkward conversation came to a close, I gave him all the cash I had in my pockets as a parting gesture and lamely suggested that we should arrange to do this again sometime. <laughs> I feel that that's both insulting and unfortunate for you at the same time, Danny. It's just a lose-lose. I was strangely relieved when he announced that he didn't have a mobile phone or a, phone or a social media account or any practical method of communication because he didn't want the agents of the Illuminati tracking his every move and harvesting his data. I'm beginning to think that Mark might need professional help. <laughs> His final words to me were, I'll be one of the last ones standing when the rest of you have had your mind sucked dry by 5G. Oh sh**, Mark. Oh sh**. He seemed strangely proud and defiant, as if he were looking down at me like I was a hopeless idiot. What all the conspiracy people do? You're like, no, 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 I, I do believe that we landed on the moon. It's like, no, 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 I mean, I don't believe that all those like flying things are UFOs. And they're like, well, you do you, man. You live in the dark if you want to. And it's like, I just, stop it. Stop it. I nearly asked him for my money back. I didn't have the heart to tell him that the Illuminati have probably got better ways of spending their time than monitoring Mark as he falls out of bed every lunchtime. <laughs> 
and then pops down to Greg's to see if they've got any out-of-date sausage rolls going cheap. Mark, your life sounds depressing, mate. As far as sequels go, 5G. Also, Danny, what are you doing? Why are you hanging out with people? It's coronavirus time, caused by... <laughs> Uh, as far as sequels go, 5G, the fifth generation of wireless communications technology, appears to have whipped up far more negative attention and frenzied debate than any of its predecessors. In that regard, it's about, about the same level as Police Academy 5, Assignment Miami Beach. Does that exist? Anyway, 1G was all about mobile voice calls. 2G introduced text messaging for the first time. 3G was all about smartphones and data. 4G was all about pissing about with video calls. I'm almost embarrassed. I'd ne I, I didn't know this. <laughs> I really didn't know this. I thought it was just all about speed. I don't, I'm almost embarrassed to admit that with all of the hype and conspiracy theories relating to 5G, I'd actually forgotten what it was even meant to do and I had to check but of course 5G is largely about speeding things up and providing greater global connectivity while dramatically increasing download and upload speeds through a far superior and more powerful infrastructure. Well, that just sounds good, doesn't it? Like, I like it when my 4K videos load faster. It's not going to cause COVID, hopefully. We'll be fine. Yeah, but, oh, you don't want to live near one of those receivers. It's definitely going to give you cancer. Except there's been no study ever to show that ever. It's like all those dumb motherfuckers going on about Diet Coke. Oh, it's got aspartame. I can't believe you drink that cancer juice! Except there's been no studies showing this ever. And whenever, whenever I say this, people are like, Simon, have you seen this study? And I'm like, that study showed that they pumped like a rat. For, they basically replaced this rat's blood with aspartame and it got cancer. And I'll be like, well, okay, but that's not exactly what's going on with a Diet Coke, is it? Oh no! Oh no! I can already feel the cancer. Uh, uh. That's the official line anyway. What's the official line? Oh yeah, faster internet. That's what the government wants you to think. <laughs> But if you dare, this video is going to get banned or something because they're going to be like, this guy's, my channel will get banned. <laughs> I didn't even think about this. I might have to retitle it. Maybe the, if the title is something other than the best 5G conspiracy theories, I decided that I had to rename this video because I didn't want to get my channel banned for promoting 5G conspiracy theories, which by the way, is not what we're doing. We're making fun of them because they're all stupid. But if you dare to stray from the flock of sheeple and open your eyes, you might just learn the disturbing truth about the poisonous and dangerous smokescreen technology which was developed in the bowels of hell by Satan's top team of horned scientists. Here are some of the wildest conspiracy theories to be cooked up in the foul name of 5G, along with the full details on why it's destined to kill us all. Oh sh**. All sarcasm, just to be 100% clear, all sarcasm. Still, the bit about faster internet sounds quite good to me. So it's all just swings and roundabouts, really. Which, I uh, mean, in, in English, means pros and cons. In American, I realize that saying doesn't exist, but it's really good, so why don't you start adopting it? Come on. 5G is bad for your health. Uh, it's not completely out of the question that 5G is really bad for your health. Oh, oh. In the same way that getting out of bed in the morning and doing anything at all is probably quite bad for your health, yes. But some of the widespread claims about the dangers of 5G are quite shockingly extreme, and many of them relate to the sinister airwaves emitted by the new mobile phone technology. Oh, sh I, got a, I, I just got a 5G mobile phone. I can already feel the cancer. <laughs> right at the top of the extreme scale are the claims that the new powerful airwaves can literally cook the water molecules in your body and make you sterile, and that the rollout of 5G is largely a plot to sterilize the children of the world as they piss about with their iPads in the school classroom. I, I always like wondering about the motivation behind conspiracy theories. <laughs> like, what's this one do? It sterilizes the population. Who would want that? It's like, why? Like, more people is generally better in most ways, except for the environment. The environment's f***ed. But also, I mean, are the conspiracy theories is the, like, Illuminati cabal trying to protect the environment? And if so, well, one, you're doing a sh job. And two, that doesn't really seem very Illuminati, does it? It's more like, no, 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 we want to work out how to burn more oil and make more money, rather than... We're trying to save the world. Moving down the scale, a more popular theory is the airwaves can seriously suppress your immune system. <laughs> this is so laughable. Obviously a bit of a concern during a global pandemic and that the electromagnetic radiation will ultimately give everyone brain cancer, please. These flames were further fans when a photograph surfaced on Instagram in 2019, which appeared to depict an engineer working on the installation of a new 5G tower while togged up in a hazmat radiation suit to protect him from the death rays. In fact, the engineer was just cleaning bird shit from the tower and was wearing the suit to avoid the risk of any unpleasant backsplash. Yes, although 
Why is there gonna be backsplash? Is he like pissing on the bird shit? And it wasn't even a 5G tower, it was just an old 4G tower. But maybe they give you brain cancer and make you sterile too. Or maybe they don't. <laughs> Again, it's like, you need to prove that they do, rather than prove that they don't. Rather than the people, like, you you. <laughs> it's not our responsibility to prove a negative, all right? The truth is that 5G does indeed make use of more powerful airwaves than any of its predecessors. There are two types of electromagnetic radiation. Ionizing radiation, which is found in X-rays and the rays of the sun, which can be damaging to the human body, as it has the power to smash electrons out of their orbit around an atom. Yes, everyone knows this. Like, x-rays are bad for you it's why when you go to the dentist <laughs> and they're like okay you need to stand in this room with this scary ass machine wearing this lead thing which protects your balls and i'm gonna stand outside of this really thick door and every time i'm like oh, i know this isn't good but they need to x-ray my teeth <laughs> Uh, but also it's such a small amount that you're gonna be fine. Uh, there's also non-ionizing radiation which can be found in everyday electrical items such as say your microwave and is not remotely powerful enough to alter anyone's DNA, a scientific fact which has been confirmed on several occasions by the World Health Organization. Yeah, but they're in on it! The WHO, who I think I once called The Who in a video and drew some heat, but I stand by it. I, I think that's also acceptable. Yeah, they're in on it. They're part of the Illuminati lizard cabal, allegedly. <laughs> Anyone who is genuinely worried that non-ionizing radiation is dangerous should perhaps be far more concerned about the light bulbs in your house, which emit much higher frequencies than 5G. But you can always stick to candles if you're not yet convinced that light bulbs are perfectly safe. They are. Don't worry about it. Don't be like that guy in Better Call Saul who has the... T he's like literal tinfoil hat wearer. And the most compelling evidence that non-ionizing radiation doesn't lead to brain cancer is the fact that it have been rolling around in it for decades. Yet the rate of new brain cancer cases has significantly lowered since 1992. Oh my god, 5G cures brain cancer! <laughs> the juries, it doesn't! It, does, it doesn't do anything! I feel like conspiracy theories should be fought rather than just be like, that's dumb don't believe that. They should be fought with anti-conspiracy theories. Like, I'm gonna start the conspiracy theory that 5G is brilliant for you. And if you've got cancer, it's going to cure it. And I mean, this would be equally outrageous, but not any less dumb. The jury's still out on whether non-ionizing radiation makes people stupid, though. It doesn't. I mean, everyone, uh, look, look, no comments, all right? <laughs> 5G causes COVID-19. Ah, oh, shit. It can be difficult to pinpoint exactly the origin of a crazy 5G rumor. Probably this video. <laughs> in a year, in a year, it's gonna be like, well, yeah, 5G is curing cancer. <laughs> where did this origin, where did this start? Snopes is like a business place. A video I made on my personal channel, I made one video on the Simon Whistler channel where I got really pissed off with, you know those adverts? <laughs> this is a little bit of a tangent. You know those adverts you see like on a, website that you're reading like and it says you know these really clickable headlines like Piers Brosnan's final net worth left his family in tears and I'm like oh my god Piers Brosnan is dead <laughs> what and then I click on it and it's just like this crazy hole of ads and cancer and you're like what's going on so I decided to make a video about these uh, adverts showing what actually happens when you click on them and making fun of it and this video like I, it, nothing happened originally because I just did it on my own channel which has like had like 4,000 subscribers or something. It actually started, this video just started taking off recently and Snopes picked it up and did an article about it. And I was like, that's amazing. I love you, Snopes. Mwah! You can check out that video. I might link to it below, but I probably won't. Also, Skillshare's linked to below and you should click on them instead because reasons. It can be difficult to point, uh, and in this case, it's perhaps not even particularly important where it began. It's more worrying how high profile names helped give it traction, how helped give traction to the idea by sharing unfounded theories with their devoted followers. In a plot nicked straight from a dystopian novel, an alarmingly huge number of people believe that COVID-19 was the result of a technological experiment gone horribly wrong. Oh wait, that the, actually <laughs> It actually made a virus? What is going on? One popular there version of the myth alleges that myth alleges that 5G poisoned the cells in our body to such an extent that we began to excrete toxic waste, which eventually mutated into COVID-19. Do you not understand how ridiculous you sound? The outlandish claim was posted on YouTube by a US doctor, albeit on disciplinary probation at the time, called Dr. Thomas Cowan. Yeah, it's like the guy, the, the vaccine guy. Let's just call him Dr. Cockface because I can't remember his real name. Uh, Andrew Wakefield. Also, let's just call him Dr. Cockface anyway. Um, he was a real doctor and he stood by it. And then the, he's British, and the, the British Medical Council, I think it's called, who decide whether you get to be a doctor or not, were like, sorry, Andy. 
<laughs> you, you're no longer a doctor. We took away your medical license. But that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us! Yet he still calls himself a doctor and goes around the world preaching about how vaccines cause autism, and kind of directly being responsible for thousands of deaths, allegedly. Which is, I think we should just call him Mr. Cockface, or just Cockface. His video was later removed from the platform, but not before his theory had been reposted and endorsed on social media by a raft of celebrity names who managed to get millions of their fans on board with this bull. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus! Other more radical variants of the myth suggest that the virus is purposefully transmitted through the use of 5G, or that the virus is using 5G to communicate with itself around the world. What? It's intelligence. Of course, Dr. Thomas Cowan didn't pluck this theory out of the virus polluted air. He'd given it at least a good 10 minutes worth of thought and research. He argued that about a century ago, the world had witnessed a very similar sequence of events when the launch of commercial radio services had coincided with the outbreak of the Spanish flu. Dude, ah, uh, I know I joked at the beginning that correlation is always causation, but that was a joke. It's not. It's like my YouTube channel started taking off when I shaved my head. That is more related than this. This time he reckoned that the initial outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China just happened to occur in one of the first cities to have erected 5G towers on a large scale. Oh my god. <laughs> what a, what a link. How did you get a medical degree, Thomas? Some of the biggest names to have shown support for this theory include Oscar-nominated actor Woody Harrelson. Woody, what are you doing, mate? Come on. Come on. British boxer Amir Khan, who put forward his credentials by revealing that he'd recently been watching a lot of videos and stuff, and had come to the scientific conclusion that 5G could make things bad. I mean, he's a boxer, so I mean, you know, after a while, I don't think you're all there, allegedly. Hollywood star John Cusack, no, John! I like you, Woody Harrelson. John Cusack, I like you more. John, no, please, no. You know nothing. He posted a tweet to his 1.6 million followers. The next day it'll be like, Bill Murray did it. That would be the only thing more disappointing. Which explained that 5G will be proven to be very, very bad for people's health. He later deleted the tweet. But only after he had insulted any of his loyal fans who dared to disagree with his claims by labeling this, them just dumb and f***ing sheep. John Cusack, you seem like a really nice dude. Now I just think you're a bit of a bell. Allegedly, in my opinion. The problem with Dr. Cowan's evidence, evidence, is that 5G hadn't been fully deployed in Wuhan when the first outbreak emerged, and many of the earliest outbreaks naturally occur uh, in big cities with dense... This coke, it does something to me. I mean, not give me cancer, it gives me burps, which is less bad. The problem with Dr. Cow, blah, 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 it hadn't been fully implemented when it first emerged, and many of the earliest outbreaks naturally occurred in big cities with dense populations, with either very limited 5G or no 5G at all. In fact, one of the earliest, most deadliest outbreaks occurred in Iran, a country which had barely even heard of 5G at the time. Oh yeah, I remember the early days of Iran, the, the 5G, the 5G outbreak. Oh my God, Whistler, get your sh together. A COVID in Iran. Yeah, they don't have 5G. Then, of course, there's the small matter that any connection between COVID-19 and 5G is just biologically impossible. No shit. But that hasn't stopped angry protesters from taking to the streets with their pitchforks and in many cases burning 5G masts down to the ground. I mean, this is okay. There's this thing called the, 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 it's a, it's a bell curve, right? Like IQ. And it goes like this. And most people are somewhere in the middle. But that does mean that a large percentage of people are over on the dumb side. And I mean a large number of people. Like even if you're like 10% of the world, which is a massive underestimation of dumb, then they can believe that. But I mean overall, that's still 700 million people, which is a lot of people. It's believed that much of this was fueled by footage on social media, which apparently showed the citizens of Hong Kong furiously revolting against 5G, although it was later revealed that the footage was taken from the previous summer during the Hong Kong protest triggered by the introduction of the Fugitive Offenders Amendment Bill. But the cases of widespread destruction and arson in the UK, Belgium, New Zealand, Quebec and elsewhere are disturbingly real. In the month of May 2020 alone, 77 attacks were carried out on 5G masts in the UK, including the targeting of a mast which was provi providing crucial mobile connectivity to Nightingale Hospital in Birmingham. One 5G engineer in London called Michael became the target for verbal abuse while he was just trying to do his job as the angry public accused him of helping to spread coronavirus. Oh, it's embarrassing to be British at times. One of the protesters even spat directly in his face in contempt. Maybe Michael should have pointed out, look, 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 5G doesn't cause COVID. That f***ing did. Shortly afterwards, Michael had to, had to self-isolate after being con after being suspected of having coronavirus. This <laughs> it wasn't from the 5G though. It's because that guy spat in his f***ing face. Uh, okay. If you're dumb and you need help, well, 
Luckily, you can build some skills with today's fantastic sponsor, Skillshare. What is Skillshare? Skillshare is, it's a website, it's for creators. And as we discussed last time I did this read, I was like, can't it be for more than creators? Can't it be for like other people? And then I realized kind of everyone is a creator these days. I mean, if you're gonna be using Skillshare, like learning new skills, I went through and I'm like, oh my God, it's always like for creating something. And I was like, that's why Skillshare thinks through their ad copy rather than me just like trying to it and be funny and failing because I'm not that clever. Not that dumb though either, not that dumb. You can learn everything, graphic design, animation, marketing skills, UX design, entrepreneurship. Oh my God, you could become like the next Steve Jobs with this. Like you could start Pixar. You could, look, everything's there. Entrepreneurship, you start up your company. UX design, I guess you make a website or some shit. Graphic design and animation, yes, you make Toy Story and then you market it and boom, next thing you know, you're a billionaire. Easy. All possible with Skillshare. Uh, again, let me just preface that with that is my opinion, not a guarantee. They don't say here, guarantee people become billionaires. Probably shouldn't do that one. Uh, oh yeah, you don't have to pay for individual classes. I've mentioned that before, which is great because like a lot of these platforms where you're like, oh, I need to learn something online. And it's like, oh, we've got individual classes and they're all really expensive. And then it's like, but I don't need everything. I don't need 14 hours about lighting. I'm just, because I'm looking at my lights right now. I just need one that tells me how to set up that particular softbox, which is a type of light. It's fascinating. It's not, but it is kind of important for what I do. And like with those other platforms, you're like, oh great. Well, I just spent like a ton of money for that one thing. With Skillshare, you just pay per month. It's super reasonable and it's unlimited. You can watch as many classes as you want. Uh, what have I, I, I actually did take a course on lighting on Skillshare. It was really good. I think it was a Skillshare original, which are like their ones that they help film and put together. I mean, all the stuff's good, but those look really nice. They're like shot on like professional cameras and stuff. It looks really good. I think, I'm not sure if it was an original, but it looked really good probably because the guy was teaching how to do lighting. So if his own videos looked a bit shit, you'd be like, <laughs> probably gonna learn off the other guy. I'm not really selling this, am I? But it was really, good and it's how I learned to light my videos so beautifully. Uh, what else did I do? I took an email course from someone called Alexandra Samuel, which got my inbox under control. I mentioned that before. And I, I've taken some other stuff. Like, it's easy. You just go in and jump in. Honestly, I'm not a big, like, follow the course all the way through person. I'm like, okay, I need to learn this one thing. I'm super busy. I just need to learn how to light, like, a set like this. Because, yeah, that class had other things, like how to light outside. And it's like... Don't need to know that it's light outside and I don't film anything out there. I barely go outside. One, because there's COVID and two, why? I basically live at work and then I go home and then that's it. The only time I spend outside, it's winter now, it's dark. What am I talking about? Skillshare are giving away a free trial. There is a link below. How fantastic is that? Oh, first thousand people only. Go on, crack that number, guys. I wanna get it. Skillshare be like, Simon, you did it. You cracked the thousand at last. We're finally not disappointed in you. Uh, yeah, link below. It's also super affordable if you're not one of the first thousand. $10 a month, pretty great. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to the idos idiocracy, idiocy. Idiocracy is a fantastic movie about idiocy. It's all just a bloody government conspiracy. Some of the more paranoid conspiracy theorists claim that 5G is actually a military-grade weapon which has been developed as a way to control the population. A more common theory from people who haven't smoked quite as much weed is that COVID-19 itself is a massive hoax, which was designed to enforce the lockdown of society so that the harmful 5G towers could be secretly installed without any objection. Why is there so much connection between 5G and coronavirus? Is it just because they happened in the same year? I don't understand. <laughs> This theory is rooted in the idea that governments know full well that 5G can at the very least give you brain cancer or mad cow disease or whatever. We're just jumping into a whole other territory of diseases. It's like, yeah, brain cancer, it can cause it mad cow disease, which is a very specific disease caused by a very specific problem, uh, uh, like badly folding proteins or uh, uh, prions. Isn't that what it's called? Jesus Christ. But they're still keen to roll this out under the radar because faster internet trumps everything. <laughs> I don't think we need to spend too much time trying to debunk this one. For starters, the rollout of 5G was hardly carried out under the veil of shadow. They probably should have, though. <laughs> I know it would be more sketchy if people were like, why are you trying to do it in secret? Well, because in the alternate timeline, everything went hella wrong, so we thought we'd have to do it secretly. And it somehow managed to attract an avalanche of objections and protests even during national lockdowns. Until somebody invents invisibility paint, the chances of installing major new infrastructure around the world without anyone noticing or objecting are always going to be pretty slim. Regardless, of whether all the pubs and hairdressers are shut. Yes. And bearing in mind that at the time of the writing, nearly 2 million people have died from COVID-19, there's quite a strong argument against the virus being a hoax. I'd go beyond that and say there's a very 
fucking strong argument against it. Another theory is that governments of the world carefully chose certain locations in which to trial 5G so that they could monitor the results and assess how much damage they were unleashing with this treacherous technology. But not all local authorities were playing ball. A couple of cities and towns in Northern California passed ordinances to just stop the provenance of 5G technology in 2019. Oh, I knew it was gonna happen somewhere, wasn't it? I'm surprised it's Northern California. Aren't they all techies out there? I mean, but there's gonna be like some guy or girl who's like middle-aged and read these conspiracy theories on Facebook from like one of their crazy friends and were like, oh, I just happen to be on the town council. <laughs> I'm gonna do something about that. <laughs> So, oh, for fuck's sake, please stop. Uh, While well, that same year, Brussels temporarily abandoned work on 5G installation as the environment minister angrily reported that his citizens would not be treated as guinea pigs. Yeah, but it's Belgium. I mean, there wasn't there that terrorist attacks that was it in France? <laughs> and the Belgian police, like, knew that there were terrorists and they just failed. Belgium never strikes me as the most competent country. <laughs> And this just adds fuel to the fire, Belgium. Meanwhile, the UK town of Glastonbury gave a two-fingered salute to 5G when the council voted to oppose the rollout of the new technology. Again, this is the same thing as before. Some middle-aged wacko reads on Facebook, sits on the town council, is like, oh, yes, 5G, that's bad. Let's not do that. F*** off, Glastonbury. I'll give you two fingers. Uh, two fingers in the UK. I, I know this is the bigger one. In the UK, this is also offensive. Slightly less offensive. So as a kid, you'd be like, Hey, hey, hey! This was over fears that the annual legendary music festival was being hijacked by the government as a 5G experiment. What is going on? In which the thousands of visitors would be treated like lab rats. Please, no. All very unlikely, of course. All entirely impossible, of course, Danny. Even if the government was trying to assess the potentially damaging effects of 5G, they probably wouldn't target an event in which everybody is already frazzling their fragile brains with LSD and a long shopping list of other mind-bending ingredients. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're really worried about 5G. G. Pass me one of those uh, LSD tabs that someone cooked up in a lab in their basement. It's like, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with you? It would be like conducting an experiment into the negative effects of sugary drinks and artificial food colorings and then setting on, uh, and then settling on Columbia as the prime location for testing. <laughs> OG business plays joke right there. Because of the cocaine. 5G is destroying our wildlife. Maybe you're resigned to the fact that 5G is destined to wipe out humanity. And you've decided that depopulating the Earth might even prove quite handy for cutting down the queues at the post office. But what if 5G was also destroying the birds and the trees? That's surely a line you don't want to cross. In October 2018, a flock of nearly 300 starlings was found dead in a park in The Hague in the Netherlands. And the anti-5G mob were quick to point the finger at the new technology which was apparently being trialled in the area. <laughs> Hundreds more starlings were found dead in a road in North Wales in December 2019 and similar conclusions were drawn, of course without any evidence whatsoever. I mean, Danny didn't write that, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume, I'm gonna bet, Oh, as I said in a video I recently recorded, that I just proof watched before doing this, um, if it turns out that there is some evidence, I'm gonna slap myself in the face really hard. Let's see how we do. I'm gonna guess that my face is not gonna be slapped. Meanwhile, an image of felled trees in the town of Alexanak in southern Siberia sparked fresh outrage when it was speculated that the government was cutting down healthy trees and planting replacements to hide the fact that the old trees would inevitably die when 5G was rolled out. All right, guys. To address that last point first, are we just delaying my slap? Uh, it turned out that the linden trees were rotten and to be replaced with new maple trees as part of a major reconstruction project in the area. There's zero evidence to suggest the 5G had any impact on the trees or plant life. And that goes for the birds too. Oh, my face stays safe. It's difficult to confirm exactly why hundreds of starlings had dropped dead in the same spot. It could have been a mass suicide pact. It's more likely that the bird of prey caused mass conf confusion, leading to a series of clumsy and fatal mid-air collisions. That, that does sound more likely, doesn't it? But the truth is that stuff like this is not uncommon and has been going on for years. Way back in 1904, the citizens of Nobles County in Minnesota witnessed a mighty aflocalypse in which 750,000 migrated Lapland long spurs were found dead on the streets, fields, and in the lakes. And this predates 5G technology by quite some time. Yes, it does. An official explanation was never confirmed, but all the birds had impact injuries, so they were most likely confused by predators or weather conditions or the bright streetlights of the town, which again led to mass collisions. Our final point to bear in mind is that the Hague hadn't even gone around to trialing 5G yet when those 300 dead starlings were first discovered again. What a surprise. I'm not slapping myself in the face. Snopes hit the nail on the head legends. 
uh, when they concluded that the person responsible for sharing the images and stoking the flames of speculation was someone with a vendetta against 5G and objective reality. Bill Gates. Next, next entry. Bill Gates intend to use 5G to control your brain with a microchip. Oh, already. Have a look at the dislike ratio on this video because it's going to be higher. Because all the Bill Gates crazies who are like, he's injecting us with microchips. Wake up, sheeple. Uh, they're going to be disliking this video because Bill Gates, despite being the greatest philanthropist of the modern age, is uh, for some reason hated by wackos on the internet in large numbers, amazingly. But don't worry, Bill, you're an absolute f***ing legend. If you want a free t-shirt and you happen to be watching this, but you don't, you're unbelievably rich and you're not watching this video, but I, I, I certify you as a legend. Most 5G conspiracy theories lead back to COVID-19 eventually, and the timing of the 5G rollout and the outbreak of the virus is perhaps a tad unfortunate. But then again, if the virus had emerged earlier in history, it could just as easily be linked to the rollout of the internet, the rollout of television, or the invention of the compass. Perhaps the most absurd theory of all is that COVID-19 was masterminded by Bill Gates in a bid to flog his new miracle cure, which would involve secretly implanting microchips in your skin so that every move can be tracked and monitored with the age of 5G. With the aid of 5G. It's also claimed that the microchip could potentially read your mind, control your actions, and encourage you to download Raid Shadow Legends onto your mobile phone. That is probably the only marketing channel that Raid Shadow Legends have left. A recent YouGov poll of 1,640 people suggested that 28% of Americans Americans believe that Bill Gates wants to use vaccines 28% to as a decoy for installing 5G microchips in humans. One in every three Americans. Although the people who have time, like if someone phones me up, I never get these because I don't have a landline. Anytime someone phones me, like it's, I live in Czech Republic in, in Prague, anytime someone phones me, they're, they're, I'm like, I pick up the phone I, and it's an unknown number. I always answer in English, always. And if it's like a pollster or someone trying to sell me shit, I always just say, uh, I don't know what you're saying. And then they never call back and it's brilliant. But the people, what my point is, that the people who uh, answer the, the polls, it's like if I lived in America and if someone phoned me up, it'd be like, do you have two minutes for a poll? No, God! Be like, no. <laughs> but the people who do, let's just say I think they're more likely to believe in the 5G stuff because they're, they're not at work on a Tuesday afternoon and have time to do a poll. When you take Democrat voters out of the equation and focus on Republicans, that figure rises to a shocking 44%. So more Republicans believe in 5G? Cause why? Why? Less extreme variants of the theory insist that Bill Gates' microchip isn't intended to control you, he's just trying to upgrade you with 5G technology so that so you won't need a mobile phone in the future. You'll be able to make calls and pay for your lucky strikes by just wiggling your arm around a bit. This is so absurd. Another theory is that he's just trying to make a few bucks from flogging a vaccine to a virus that he created. Oh, sh**. That is the most believable thing here, and it's utterly, utterly ridiculous. On you one YouTube channel with tens of thousands of followers, uh, which we're absolutely not going to name because we don't want to give them any publicity, uh, drew parallels between the vaccine and Microsoft Windows. Uh, claiming that Bill's operating system was purposefully designed to be vulnerable to viruses so that it can make a fortune selling antivirus software. <laughs> Considering that, well, that's also not true. Look, I didn't, I had Windows on my computer, which I downloaded, because you just download Windows, and I installed it on my computer, and then I never paid for it. And it just said activate Windows in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen for ages. And it's like, I'm happy to pay for Windows. It's just, I didn't, you know, it just never bothered to, if it stopped working, I'll be, or stopped updating or something, I'll be like, okay, I guess I'm gonna pay for it. But it kept updating, everything worked fine. I couldn't t change my backgrounds and I never understood it. And I mentioned this in a previous business play video and someone was like, they do this because they don't want you to have non-updated windows because it makes you vulnerable and you can be part of something called a botnet, which helps hackers do all sorts of nefarious shit. And I was like, okay, so literally if you don't pay for windows, they're just gonna make it, they're just gonna give it to you anyway. Bill Gates. Legends. Uh, and then I paid for it because I wanted to set my own backgrounds eventually. <laughs> I felt bad, like I was doing something wrong, and I probably was. Considering that Bill Gates already spent nearly $2 billion on helping to develop, manufacture, and distribute vaccines, he must surely have dark days when he wonders why he even bloody bothers. I think Bill Gates is above this. Like, Bill Gates is like, yeah, people talk shit about him on the internet. Bill Gates doesn't care. Bill Gates is eradicating diseases, he's trying to save the world. And he's like, yeah, people can talk smack about me. I'm like a 65 year old man. I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna do my thing. You can do what you want. I'm rich. <laughs> I live in a massive house. <laughs> my life is 
baller and I just give away more money than I could ever possibly spend. I think Bill Gates is pretty cool with it. Like, why would he care? <laughs> All of these conspiracy theories could quickly be dismissed as bloody impossible nonsense were it not for a compelling photograph shared on social media in late 2020. Oh my god, again, this feels more risky, but I'm gonna say that this photo is not particularly compelling. I've never seen of it, I've never heard of it, and if I write it off fairly instantly, if I don't write it off fairly instantly, I'll slap myself in the face. Let's see how we do. Uh, the image from Italy claimed to have leaked a schematic diagram of the 5G microchip that will be bundled into the COVID-19 vaccine. And the anti-5G mob shared the post hundreds of thousands of times across every available platform. It's fake or something. In fact, the image turned out to be the schematic for a popular electric guitar pedal called the Boss MT2 Metal Zone. Yeah, uh, didn't Danny describe this as compelling? In, I mean, I guess it's compelling and you're like, wow, look at that and then it's not compelling when you find out it's totally fake. Although I suppose the conspiracy theory, what's going on? It's very possible that the original poster from Italy was just completely taking the piss, but managed to convince the nutters that he was turning up the volume on the distorted lies by pedal being peddled by the worst governments. But of course, of course, the human race has been here before. Back in the 1970s, the world was convinced that new power lines were giving school children cancer. Over the years, we've seen blind panic sprout up from the use of mind-frazzling microwave ovens, hair dryers, and even electric blankets. <laughs> Those dangerous electric blankets. And although it might seem as if we're currently suffering a, pan a pandemic of conspiracy theories, just wait until the rollout of 6G in the 2030s. Oh, we're uh, for the shit to really hit the fan. Just a couple of months prior to writing the script, China has already launched their first 6G test satellite into orbit, orbit in a bid to verify the terahertz communication technology in space. I'm predicting that most of the scaremongering will revolve around 6G enabling invisible alien body snatchers to take over the Earth. Who the f*** knows? I wouldn't put it past us. That's assuming 5D hasn't already reduced all of our brains to broth by then. This has been an episode of Business Blaze. I have been your boy with the blaze. This one was f ridiculous. I hate all this sh if you'd like to see a video of the best terrorist attacks, let me know in the comments below. Also, you watch to the end. So if you're letting me know that you'd like to see that video, I think you probably did watch to the end and are therefore a certified legend. Pick up the certified legend shirt at perchthemerch.co or also get Skillshare. Skillshare. Below. Do it. Just do it! Evidence.